Hey everyone, I'm Joe and today it's time for me to do my reading wrap up for June 2018. June was a really good reading month. I read 13 books in total by 9 different authors spread over 3 genres. And the quality is also varied. Some were brilliant, some were mediocre, some were frankly terrible in my opinion. Anyway, without further ado, I'll get straight on to talking about the books. The first of which is Revenant Good by Yoon Ha Lee. Now, this is one that I did a separate review of earlier in June, so I'm not going to say too much about it now because basically I'll be repeating myself. That review is relatively spoiler free. Obviously, it's spoiler free as you can get considering this is the third book in the Machineries of Empire trilogy. So, you know, it's how spoiler free can you get when you're talking about the third in the trilogy. I'm not going to say too much now because, again, spoilers, but it is a really fitting end to the trilogy that started with Nine Fox Gambit, which was brilliant. Then it was continued by Raven Stratagem, which was equally brilliant. And now this final one, which, again, unsurprisingly, is brilliant. It is science fiction, it is strange and bizarre. It's set in this Hexar world. There are um, sort of space battles in a strange manner because this whole system uses a mathematical uh, calendrical system which is strange and bizarre and I still don't fully understand although at some point I will reread all three books extremely close together say maybe at the end of the year or, or even next year and hopefully then I should understand the whole trilogy more and indeed the systems within it far better than I do now but suffice to say I liked this book a lot it was well written, good ideas Strange ideas, but still good despite it. And I would highly recommend this if you want something um, interesting and a little bit different. Obviously, this is a bad book to start with, non Fox Gambit first, of course. The second book that I read was Raven Cry by Ed MacDonald. This is the second book in the Raven's Mark series. I will be doing a separate review of this book in two days' time, two days from when this video is uploaded, so Wednesday the 4th of July. This is a fantasy book and I really really enjoyed it to start with. It is both a very dark world, it is not a grim dark fantasy by the way either, despite some people calling it that, I don't class it as, because grim dark to me is something that I have issues with because grim dark is pessimistic and negative and frankly I haven't enjoyed the grim dark that I've read. This isn't grim dark to me because there's too much right in it. Yes, Obviously it is dark, I mean the cover has a raven covered in blood so you know it's not exactly you know cheerful and happy all the time but it does have its moments of lightness and it's an interesting book the main character is a character called Roy Hart Galvaro the city surrounded by this strange area called the Misery and there are people that don't want the city to be there basically that's what I'm going to say for now I'll have more in my review but it's a really good second book in a series and I don't have many books this series is going to have, whether it will be a trilogy, whether it will be longer. But however many it is, I'm very interested to reading the other books regardless. Next, I have not just one book to show you, but five. And that is the Vatas War series by Elizabeth Moon. This begins with Trading in Danger. Then we have Moving Target. Then we have Engaging the Enemy which in almost every other edition going is normally referred to as Mark and Reprisal. I don't know why this, they changed the name for this particular edition, but whatever, they did. Then Command Vision, and finally uh, Victory Conditions. Now this series, I'm going to be doing a separate review of the series as a whole in the upcoming future, because I frankly love this series and I think it's well worth talking about as a whole, so I'm not going to say too much now. I will say that it is a science fiction series. The main character is called Kailara Vata or just Kai Vata as she's known and basically she starts off in the first book as a military cadet. She gets kicked out of the academy though for reasons I'm not going into and then she ends up in the family business which is trading, you know big trade ships across interstellar space and events take some quite dark turns actually remarkably dark turns at the start and she's basically got to, got to fight back against the things that are happening to her and the Vata family because there are some not very pleasant people in this world, as you might guess. 
it is well written, brilliantly um, executed, great characters, great world. I'll talk about it more in a separate review, but I cannot recommend this series enough because it is just, frankly, brilliant overall. It really is. Next up is the first two books in a five book series, and that is The Long Earth and The Long War, both by T. Pratchett and Stephen Baxter. Now, again, like the Rattles War series, which I've just talked about, I will be doing a separate review of these once I've read books 3, 4 and 5, which I do have, and I will be reading them in July, so the review for that for this series will be sometime in August, I believe. This is a very interesting series, which I'm greatly enjoying. The basic premise of it is one day, which is now known after in the book as Step Day, everybody discovers that the technology becomes available, some people can do this naturally, people can step, like, like literally take one single physical step, and they step between realities, you know, between sort of alternate realities, and these alternate realities are still Earth, but the Earth where there are no um, other people, you know, there is no humanity on them, so it's like a clean version of Earth, and so we start moving between these other um, Earth and start colonising them but you can't bring technology at least advanced technology between them so you can only really bring yourself and basic tools which is interesting and creates a very strange sort of economy and why that these other alternative Earths work the governments are losing control because people are just stepping away into these alternate realities you know, and there are millions of these realities you know layer upon layer upon layer as as uh, multiverse theory often is and governments are losing control they try to be it some people are resisting it some people go with it it's interesting idea and concept and one that i enjoy and i will talk about this more in a separate review once i finish the series next is the book that i least enjoyed in june and that is valleys by philip k dick and yes this is one of the years by SF Masterworks. Now, Philly K. Dick, with me, has a sort of track record of being either a book that I really, really enjoy or really, really hate. And for the record, most of them I don't generally like. There are a few that are particularly good, most not so much. And this is one of the not so much, really, because, frankly, it is very hard for me to describe the plot, because I really actually didn't understand anything what I actually read. It's to do with theology and um sort of alternate worlds and reality itself in strange manners i can't describe any more than that because as i said i honestly didn't understand anything that i've read it's just a strange jumble and mishmash of ideas and all the way through i was like well what is this referring to i didn't understand any particular idea and the overall plot was just weird it just felt frankly a mess and i didn't enjoy it frankly some people write this really highly i don't know why exactly because obviously it must be the way you approach this book obviously i didn't approach it in the right way i presume and it didn't work for me this time maybe in the future i will probably reread it and it might make sense to me then at the moment yeah this doesn't make any sense for me in fact i didn't enjoy it for that reason but it's not a bad book it's just you've got to approach it in a different frame of mind than what i did frankly Next up is The Complete Short Stories of J.G. Ballard, Volume 2. Now, I read Volume 1 of this last year, 2017. I think it was November 2017, I believe. And I loved that first volume. And, unsurprisingly, I lo loved this Volume 2 just as much. Now, this is a short story collection. It is a rather large short story collection. Actually, it's got 800 pages. It's got a lot of short stories in it. It's got well over 50. You might have up, up to 70, I can't actually remember now. And as you would expect with a very large short story collection, this obviously has some short stories that I thought were brilliant, that made really significant and amazing points about society as we live in today, about politics and about you know ecology and all sorts of other issues. Some of the short stories in it were just strange and I didn't understand where Ballard was trying to go with them and what his points were. But that is what you expect from a short story collection. Overall, it was brilliant because, yes, some of them were just merely odd. I didn't understand. But the ones that weren't odd, the ones that were brilliant, 
were truly brilliant and I really enjoyed this as a whole. Like the foot, uh, first one, this could be an interesting place to start with um, JG Ballard because it's a short story so if you don't like one there might be another that you probably will enjoy. Although it is kind of a big book in this particular edition so um, it's not the easiest to physically read but if you read it just one short story at a time over the course of a month which is what I did with it then it's much easier because you're only reading for a very short time so it doesn't actually really hurt your hands which would be a problem if this was one single story which would be frankly unpleasant. The penultimate book that I read was The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. This is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. This is an award winning uh, book, same as the first book, the fifth season. This is a fantasy book and in the first book, the fifth season, the fifth season is referenced to the fact that every uh, so many generations, this world, which is uh, tectonically highly unstable, has a basically a massive earthquake season. This messes up the world, both economically and obviously physically. And the world has to sort of survive it and then restructure itself and rebuild itself each time. And this produces massive change each time. And the season that they are about to go into though, uh, without many people being aware of it, it is going to be a very long season indeed. Normally there are only a few years. This one is going to be 30, 40, 50 years. Nobody really knows. But it's going to be so long that basically most people think that uh, humanity will not survive. Actually very little life will survive because it won't be able to. There'll be no, nothing will, will be able to grow due to obviously the volcanic ash in the air and everything else that's messed up. And I did a separate review of the first book, the fifth season, um, earlier in June. So I'm not going to say too much about it now. But this is a really good follow up to that. I'm very interested to see where this trilogy goes with the um, third book which is The Stone Sky. And I'm just, I would recommend this series. My only issue with the first book and indeed with this was the fact that in this there is a certain type of person called Origin who can control and influence the earth and indeed the earthquakes. And these people are treated like slaves essentially because of their ability. And the whole population of this world is perfectly okay with them being treated like garbage, you know, they're treated like worse than animals. They are barely fed enough and, you know, bred like animals. And there are people, but the whole population seems to be happy with it. I talk about this quite in depth, actually, in um, my review. I actually got into a bit of a rant about it, frankly. <laughs> but I did enjoy the trilogy, though, despite this. Maybe even because of it. So it's hard to say, but I did enjoy it overall. And finally, the last thing that I read in June was Just One Damned Thing After Another by Jodie Taylor. This is the first book in the Chronicles of St. Mary's series. This is a science fiction series. Though currently, I think the ninth book is just about to be released, or just has been released in the last month or two. And I can say for sure already that I will definitely be continuing with this series because this series is really fun, well written, and just really enjoyable to read frankly. It is about the idea that time travel is a an actual real option. Only certain people can really sort of do this time travel effectively and it's only really cost efficient for certain purposes. This is about the staff of a uh, sort of company I suppose you could say or building called St Mary's and basically everything that can go wrong for them keeps going wrong repeatedly and disaster after disaster. The main character is a one called Max. She is a new um, employee of that movie and she's involved in it in a really interesting way. Everything goes wrong but you know ultimately that things will work out fairly well although there will still be some quite dark moments in the books and I'm looking forward to seeing where this series goes because I thought each story was going to be self-contained but actually and whilst it can be there's obviously a greater overall arc and a greater overall theme in the books, let's say. And I'm very interested to see where Judy Taylor takes this because it's got me very interested and I really do want to read this very, very shortly. Because unfortunately I don't happen to own any of the other stuff I'm buying. So we'll see when I get around to it. So with that said, that's actually it for all of the books that I've read 
in the month. I actually can't pick up the entire stack of books because there's so many that I'd actually end up dropping them and over certain because I've already done that once. But that's just some of them. Um, if you've read any of these books or would like to, then please leave a comment. And if you have any suggestions on books you think I might like and such, again, you know, leave a comment and we can have a discussion. Um, all my social media links as well as the links to the reviews of the individual books that I mentioned can be found in the description box below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.